Um, th thank you, Cassidy, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. And so today uh, we are going to start with uh, uh, introducing the, the biodiversity data access functions. And let me start. So this is the, the outline of the course. Uh, and yeah, basically today we are not going to do ma machine learning per se, but but it's, it's going to be necessary for the rest of the course, uh, obtaining biodiversity data. Uh, from two sources. Uh, one, it's uh, first exploring the, the entity framework. Uh, the, the Wolfram language uh, has many uh, built-in uh, entities uh, for species and other uh, real-world data. And we will also explore uh, a bit the, the new functions, uh, the Wikidata search and Wikidata data to get extra, extra properties that are not available on, on the built-in species entities. And then I will introduce uh, some uh, Wolfram function repository uh, functions that I kind of created a few months ago uh, for retrieving data from uh, different uh, platforms. One is the iNaturalist. It's a it's a, a large platform of uh, kind of um, iNaturalist uh, or naturalist uh, recording observations uh, worldwide about animals and plants. And these are going to be I naturally import I naturally uh, search function, and as well as as the as data retrieving data from the global biodiversity information facility, which is the the largest international uh, uh, infrastructure to to store biodiversity data. And and then I will also show uh, how to get obtain data from the global biotic interactions platform which is really useful for getting interactions uh, data between uh, different species. So let's start with the entity framework. So uh, how can you talk about uh, species in the Wolfram language? Uh, one of the easiest ways to use just uh, plain text uh, using uh, a control key and an equal, it will create such a kind of interface and for example let's see, try to interpret uh, blue whale here and pressing enter it, it will try to interpret the species and in this case it's correct so you just can uh, accept it and, and you get the entity for for the the blue whale which is uh, the scientific name is uh, well, it's here let me see balaneoptera musculus with uh, so once once you uh, an alternative way to to obtain the entities is using uh, the interpreter in this case the interpreter specifying that you want to interpret a species and then uh, you can enter the string for the the species that you want to to obtain and and it's it's a uh, it's it's a better way to, to make uh, out, automatize uh, the interpretation of of different species using uh, text. So um, for the the blue whale uh, entity, uh, we have uh, different properties that we can obtain. In this case, we're gonna start with the uh, the weight. It's the, the it's the largest animal in the planet. And there is also the maximum life uh, life span. Uh, in years, there, there are already like the units. And if you want, for example, to specify the weight as uh, pounds, you can use unit convert. We can call, um, we can obtain the, the scientific name out of the entity. And even some of the ent species entities have uh, thumbnail images. Uh, this one, for example, is, is it's a relative size to to human. And if you want to check all the all the properties available, yeah, it's uh, just like entering properties. And uh, we we can use interpreter into a, a list of different uh, whale species. In this case, I'm gonna, as an example, uh, to, in to interpret like the blue whale, humpback whale, killer whale, and, and a beluga, and and ask for uh, the weight using entity value. 
and as you can see, uh, beluga is much smaller than um, little, than a blue whale. So uh, I'm going to use a, a least log plot to, to get uh, to plot the the different whales' uh, weights. And uh, we could have been using a, a bar chart, but uh, in this case, it's not uh, in a log scale. All right, so now um, let's talk about a class of entities. You can also obtain a class of entities using a plain text with a free input. For, for example, for uh, all the list of endangered species, or use uh, the entity class, uh, then specify a species and, and the class that you, you want to, to retrieve. And class, ent uh, class of entities are indicated by this grid of squares on, on top of the entity box. And you can obtain the, the list of entities in a class using entity list. For example, the entity class for rattlesnake species is the, the following one. And if you want to obtain uh, all the all the entity classes associated to species, you can use entity class list. For example, there's even uh, the virus tax, taxon here. Now these viruses are on on the news every day. So um, yeah, the the rank system that currently used the scientific community is the following: is a kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, and genus and species. And in in both from species entities, you can ask for the taxonomic sequence. Uh, for example, uh, of the blue whale are the following ones. And as well, you can plot a taxonomy graph. And since this is a graph object, you can customize it, uh, indicating uh, the the graph properties that you want to uh, modify. In in this case, basically, I'm I'm asking for the taxonomic sequence of the blue whale, and then I want to use them as a, a vertex labels here using a, a list of key values using uh, the rule and thread. And then I'm also changing the the edge style using this blue. And finally, we we obtain this taxonomy graph, which uh, I think it's quite nice. And entities can can also kind of the powerful uh, of both from languages that. Uh, with a simple line of code, you can obtain, for example, this image collage uh, of endangered species that are uh, mammals. So basically, it's a bit cryptic, the code, but it was to reduce characters for a, a one-liner competition in the past. So uh, basically, what it's doing is the intersection between um, uh, endangered species and, and uh, mammals uh, species. What if uh, you are looking for a property that is is not available in the built-in uh, species entity? In there is a, a new function that will allow you to maybe uh, get lucky or, or explore uh, other properties that are not uh, built-in. One is uh, so it's the the, the wiki data search. And Wikidata is, is is similar to Wikipedia, but it's it's more uh, it's it's a uh, of a database of different properties and, and kind of uh, entities. In, and the idea is that you can retrieve, uh, these, these are not uh, built-in entities, but they're external identifiers. And with Wikidata search, you can obtain uh, such uh, external identifiers. And we're interested in the first one, which is uh, the one associated to the, the species of the, of the whale. 
once we we have the external identifier we can use uh, wikidata data to obtain uh, the data set and the properties associated to this external identifier so this is the data set and we can see that there is a lot of information associated and at, i was finding interesting that they provide the the property uh, of a gestation uh, period so we can see that uh, it takes a the, the gestation takes a, around like 10 months or we can also obtain like a, a an image a different image from wikidata data yeah we, i will not explore all the different properties but it's a, it's quite uh, extensive and there is even like uh, a naturalist taxon that we will talk later I think at this point I, I should be uh, sharing with you the first uh, poll question. Let me uh, write this. It's my first time sharing a poll question. So Geoffrey, while uh, yes. people are answering the poll questions, we have a question from Katya about mm -hmm. how complete and up to date is the list of endangered species in our uh, database it's, it's it needs to be updated uh, there is like every year there are new species and, and, and taxon changes and i know it's not that to the updated to the latest version so that's that's something it needs to maybe in, in the next iteration of the language uh, we, we should update the entities uh, the built-in entities for species and I know that there's a, a kind of an international effort to to make sure that all taxonomies are updating at the same uh, in, in a coherent way the taxonomy of of different species. So thank you. Yeah, we we might want to merge with that efforts. I think what was the name of this? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I I could send you uh, some links on on this effort of um, kind of. Make, How make about we post them on the community forum? Then everybody will have access to it. That'll be nice. Yeah. For example, okay. yeah, I will do that. Yeah. Thank you. All right, uh, unshare results. So I think most of you got the the, the right answer. So that's that's good. It's 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 not that is in the sense that uh, it takes a while to get familiar with all these entity uh, functions but yeah um, in this case the entity class list was the one uh, needed um, so i think i can hide the results now and go to the next step so that into the wolfram function repository uh, functions that in this case, what I, I wanted is to, to get more uh, data on biodiversity that is not uh, in this built-in framework of uh, entities and also not in the Wikidata. That would be like uh, where, this, uh, where the different species of animals and plants uh, are located or were found. Uh, where, and for this, there are like two uh, large communities uh, one one is it's the the first one i'm going to talk is is the iNaturalist. Uh, it's a citizen scientist uh, platform and if if you don't know it uh, i recommend you to just um, download the, the the free app and you can log in and and then it's a kind of start exploring your uh, natural surroundings and, and record uh, uh, bird species or plants and, and then the community is going to help you. There, there is also some AI implemented so they will try to identify via the image the species but the, the, the important part here is it's a community so there will be some experts in some field that will help you to identify the species. And it's it's a it's a free app so 
I recommend you to, to use it. In this case, uh, what we are gonna, I'm gonna show is uh, how to opt, uh, kind of retrieve uh, data, get data from, from iNaturalist using a couple of um, um, Wolfram function repository functions that I did. The first one is uh, iNaturalist uh, search. It uses the, the iNaturalist API. So there are like certain uh, limitations, like for example, if you want more than 200 observations, you need to do uh, multiple calls to the API. So there is a limitation. But in, the, in this case, you can use resource function uh, to obtain uh, the, the external function, a natural, a natural uh, search. And then in, as an example, we can, for example, get uh, all the threatened species observed in Yellowstone National Park in a span of, uh, of one week. This is, uh, for example, uh, this uh, July, one week in July in Yellowstone Park, uh, Yellowstone National Park. And I'm asking for certain options like uh, get, get me threatened species and also using the observation range, geo range here with geo bounds for the Yellowstone National Park entity. And that's that's what uh, iNaturalist users uh, uh, found during that, that week on uh, endangered species. Most of them are, are bisons, American bisons, and there are also some brown bear, uh, gray wolf. And the idea is that each of these observations, they contain, uh, mo most of them, they have associated a, a, geo a geoposition that you can directly uh, plot uh, a geographics map. There is also a, a date associated, a there is a, the specification of the quality grade. And if they have uh, contained images, you will be able to also to, to have the URL to the image or uh, the thumbnail. And I think there is even more, more properties uh, for each uh, observation. There is 28 properties. And sometimes they, the, the, the species has a, an associated Wikipedia URL that it's also might be interesting to, to know. The taxon ID. And yeah, I think that's, I think there's still like eight of them. I will not go through all of them. But uh, yeah, an interesting thing is that sometimes you, you want to get observations from a particular user. Uh, for example, you, you own observations. So that's, that's also a property that can be asked uh, using iNatural Search. In this case, for example, I'm asking uh, iNatural Search to, to get all, all my observations that contain sounds. Uh, actually, I have only one recording, which was from um, a great hornet owl during last year Wolfram Tech Conference in Champaign. So I recorded it with my phone and, and kind of uploaded it. And then some, someone was, uh, a biologist was identifying the sound as a, a great hornet owl. We will talk more about uh, audio uh, on Thursday when we will train some uh, neural networks to identify a bird species. Uh, going back to the blue whale, we, we can, for example, uh, obtain all the observations from blue whales on iNaturalist and get, uh, for example, as for the count, there are like 562 uh, observations. We, we can also ask for uh, the data set and you will get this this uh, this message if if the the number of observations is above 200 you you will need to to call it multiple times using uh, page and and max items so you will uh, be able to retrieve as well data on observations that are um, beyond 200 And for example, the last one, we can check it, and probably it's uh, quite recent. Yeah, this was observed in November 30th. So it's, it's a, I actually search it's, it's a quick way to retrieve uh, data on, on species and 
so for this problem of like uh, wanting to import data on on, on la large data sets from more than 200 what we you can do is to, to use a naturalis import function for this uh, you will need first to to go to iNaturalis uh, to download download the the CSP file for what you want to do. So there is this, there is this export uh, site on iNaturalis that will allow you to specify uh, a type of animal or plant and ask for certain properties and then be able to download the CSV file with uh, all these properties. And once you you have the CSV file, you can import it into Mathematica using a naturalist import or uh, an import or the import for function, but but then you, you will need to do some um, cleaning on the data before before uh, generating the data set in this case. So as an example here, we'll, I will plot a um, few hundred or thousand of observations on, on different uh, tick species from US. I think that the, this particular species of ticks, uh, Dixodes scapularis, is the one transmitting the, the Lyme disease, especially in the East Coast. Uh, one can create uh, several plotting uh, utilities, and and in this case, I'm I'm asking for uh, the the quality research create uh, observations only, so the ones that were at least uh, confirmed by another iNaturalist user. And then in in these geographics, basically, I'm I'm. I'm using uh, some uh, polygon on the different on, on all US states and not all of them I think I omitted uh, Hawaii and uh, as well as Alaska for the map and and then yeah I think basically the results are are the following for these uh, six different uh, tick species you can see some uh, nice geographic distribution depending on the area you can see more more species or or another a quick thing that we can do as well is is, is to create a data histogram on on the same data set of tick species and in order to, to observe some seasonality. All right. So uh, one can use the, the date reduction um, on date histogram. So we can, we, we have an overlap. Uh, so we have only the, the month over a few years. And we can clearly see that in spring, it's when uh, people go outdoors and walk their dogs and, and ticks are, are getting in the way or attached to the dogs or people. So that's the the, the time of the, the period of the year that were more sightings or observations on ticks. And we could change that instead of a month, we could use a day and obtain a, a, a more accurate I don't know why there is like such a huge peak here uh, of that many observations in the part, maybe it was a particular weekend in spring. I would need to explore more of that. But it's um, clearly spring, it's, uh, it's uh, the season of ticks. With uh, another tail, uh, I think it's in, in October. Uh, I think I can share another poll question here. So let's let's do it now. Thank you for just reminding our users here yes, that both of these functions are uh, your contributions to the Wolfram function repository, right? So right. these are not built in in the Wolfram language, but they are available on the Wolfram function repository. 
I had posted the link and I saw that uh, some, some folks right. might be having issues accessing the link. So feel free to search on your favorite search engine, Wolfram Function Repository, um, and you should be able to access it and search for various other functions in addition to these fantastic functions from Geoffrey. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's a good place to close the poll. Yes, uh, so let's share the results. I think that you got it, most of you got it right. So it's a, a naturalist import. In this case, uh, I mean, I know to search uh, will retrieve uh, data and also will display it as a data set, but for uh, importing, uh, so it, once you have imported the data as a CSV file, for example, from my natural list and you have the file stored locally, then importing the data into the wall from uh, into Mathematica, you can use uh, iNaturalist import. Uh, hide the results again, sorry for that. So uh, yeah, let's let's move to the to the GBIF, so the, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility is an international network and, and research infrastructure funded by the world's governments and other institutions. And it's open access to, to data about all types of life uh, on Earth. And for those that you don't know it, uh, there is a nice web website with uh, several data sets. And the nice part is that it's um, open access and, and there's currently, it's the, it's the largest uh, biodiversity data base worldwide. So the, we will start with a GPIF search. It's a, also a, a function that you can um, find in the, in the Wolfram function repository. And in, in this case, works similarly to the, to the iNaturally search with uh, certain differences. In, you can specify uh, the, the, the species or, or as well to, as for all, and, and then specify like uh, the, the geo range, occurrence uh, geo range and use geo bounds for, um, in this case, I'm gonna use an example with a uh, halobate. These are uh, gibbons. It's a monkey species found in Indonesia. And so we will look for uh, gibbon, gibbon species in, in, in the Borneo island. And uh, the data set, once we have the data set, we can, uh, for example, um, similarly uh, that we did with the tick species, we can do a plot a geographic distribution on the different species of, of these monkeys species on the island. And you can see that there is a certain distribution of the, the gibbons depending on, on, where, on, the, on the position in the mountains there are like uh, different species. The idea is that um, you can obtain data uh, from all kinds of uh, species and this is uh, just uh, one example. And I think if you go to the, the, the site for the the GPIF search, you can check for the details and options and on and the type of data that uh, you can specify. For example, if you are you're interested in in a specific uh, date range, um, you will um, be able to also to to specify uh, um, kind of observations found in a particular area during a particular time of the year. And uh, GBIF import is uh, is similar to uh, iNaturalist import. If you have a, a large data set with uh, many hundred uh, observations, or in this case in, in GBIF, they, they call it occurrences, um, then it's it's better to 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 go to the to, to the GBIF website, log in, do, download the data set. And once you have the the CSV file, then you can, or the text file, uh, uh, yeah, the, the comma-separated values uh, file, 
use a GBIF import function and you will get a, a data set. Uh, here is an example. I, I was um, using uh, a type of uh, a species of chameleon, the triocerus. Uh, it's, it's a chameleon with uh, three horns, which is also an, an invasive, uh, invasive species in Hawaii. So I wanted to explore a bit uh, the distribution of this chameleon in, in, in the Hawaii Islands. And that's kind of uh, the observations in GBIF or occurrences in GBIF for this particular species of the um, invasive chameleon. And as a funny thing, I was also checking uh, with uh, this uh, built-in function called uh, geo within Q. So we can ask for observations that are um, within a particular uh, area. So I wanted to check how many um, of these observations from this data set of uh, this particular species are located in Hawaii, which is uh, an, inv an invasive uh, species there. And it turns out that uh, there are like more observations in Hawaii, which is not native than in the rest of the world. Uh, natively, I think it lives in, in Africa. So, as uh, one of the last functions I'm going to talk now is uh, about uh, the, the Global Biotic Interactions uh, platform. So, this uh, Globi, and this is uh, also a nice platform to obtain um, information on the interactions between species. Uh, for example, one can ask things like uh, what do honeybees uh, pollinate and, and get uh, an, a nice uh, data set on, on information on all type of uh, flowers or species of plants that uh, honeybees pollinate. The idea is that uh, using this uh, resource function, uh, one can obtain um, direct information on, on interactions between species. For example, uh, here I'm, I'm using uh, the great white shark and specifying the, the interaction type as it's, and we get uh, a graph on on species that are eaten by by sharks. I think this group here are uh, dolphins. And I'm not sure if there is one of the nodes that say Homo sapiens, but probably I think I check it once. Uh, we can also ask uh, instead of the graph, we can display a, it as a, a, a data set, and you can see that there is a, a different properties. And even if you are interested in in the in the res, in the in the reference uh, or, or the study that the, the the interaction between species was Observe it. You 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 might uh, check as well the the type of interaction. And I think in certain cases it might be uh, that the global uh, platform is um, retrieving information from iNaturalist observations. That means that if um, in one of your hikes or walks you you observe. Uh, a weird or an unknown interaction between species. You take a, a photo of animal A eating animal B that was not known before to science. It might end up being in 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 global platform. And it's 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 quite uh, common to to be the first in of observing a, an interaction between species. So. You can go there and start exploring. Uh, as a more, uh, so there are like, like let's do some experiment here. Instead of using the interaction type eats, we can use the um, has parasite. Yeah, and check the parasites that um, great white sharks might have known to science. And as a, a more sophisticated example, here I'm using three different species. One is the, the 
Euro, uh, European river otter, and then uh, two uh, fish species, salmon and the spread. And then what I'm going to do is is to get the their graph and and then do um, a joint graph on all these species and check the the, the food web uh, on on the diet of, of these different species and we can see that the river otter eats both fish and then um, see that that the sprat and, and and the the trout they have also a common um, species that they, they eat, the crankon, crankon, which I don't know exactly what, what's, what's this animal. And we can see even that the, the spread, um, they eat them kind of, the, uh, in, in, like specimens of a spread can eat, uh, they, they, they experience cannibalism with this green arrow going to themselves. And maybe to, to finish uh, the session of today, we, we can also uh, show you, I, I can also show you the, the, the taxonomic nearest, which was, uh, it, it, it works similarly as, as needed, but nearest, but for a taxonomic data. So if you have a list of uh, different uh, species of uh, plants or, or animals, you can ask for uh, what's, what's the, the nearest, uh, vegetable here from, from this list to, to pumpkin, for example, and you will learn that uh, watermelon and, and garden cucumbers are close relative to pumpkin. So let's do the last uh, poll for today. So Geoffrey, while people are answering that poll, I'll take another opportunity for a question we have. Uh, mm -hmm. Sukache is asking the GBIF data download when you download from their website automatically generates a citation. Um, it will your resource function do that as well, or would someone need to include the citation separately if they they end up using the data downloaded with the Glo the Globe data? Right. Uh, so so once you, I think uh, once you download from the GBIF the file. Mm -hmm. um it, it it will download as well as well the citation okay but for 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 this couple of functions i'm i'm not including any uh output for the citation of the data set so okay. for example gbif search is is not in, it's it's including let me check briefly but it's um you can check the the uh, the observation occurrence id but mm -hmm. there is no such um, citation directly on the function. Thank you. And I also see that wherever needed in the author notes of the resource function, you have included any license information that people must be aware of um, when they are using your function to download this external data, right? So that's exactly. something to keep in mind as well. Exactly. So that they can check the, for example, for iNaturalist, there is the iNaturalist API documentation that explains what are the limitations on the on using the API that uses the function, as well for the GBIF. Yeah. Share the results. All right. Yes. That. The, the correct answer that I was thinking of was like the global biotic interactions platform, but you are right that uh, you can use all three to to get uh, information on on patho pathogens and host data. Um, but the, you have to know beforehand uh, what's the data that you're looking for. For example, a, a type of pathogen of a of a particular species, you have to know the the name. Uh, to to obtain that that information, in the in the global global biotic interactions platform, it's it's more explorative. You can ask for uh, what are the kind of uh, host or uh, or parasites of certain species, or what what are like. Uh, I think there is an, a nice uh, we can check on the site of the Wolfram Function Repository for for the yeah all, all type of uh, supported interactions that include the global uh, data. 
are the, this long list of different interactions that can be uh, used to, to, to explore interaction between species. But if you know a particular uh, parasite or virus of, of a species, you can use both iNaturalist and, and, and GBIF to get information on that uh, particular pathogen or host. So I think that that was my intention for today to explore all these functions. And I think I need to check the reference. Uh, in, at, the, at the last section of the notebook, uh, I, I put several references. So if you're interested in knowing more about entities uh, framework, uh, you can check the, the, the elementary interaction to the Wolfram language book on chapter 16. There is there is a chapter on real world data, as well as uh, there is a, a nice blog post on, on the external identifiers and, and wiki data that uh, I touched briefly. And as well, a, a blog post on on accessing Monarch biodiversity data. We using uh, uh, I naturally search and, and GBIF. And in this case, I'm, I'm showing how to obtain various uh, information on, on monarch butterflies. Even uh, like accessing the Wikipedia data for how many page views during the year uh, a monarch, but the, the monarch butterfly article on Wikipedia uh, have. And I think I also use it the global global data. And yeah, one can specify also the target taxon in this case in in the global uh, data function. I, I was um, explicitly asking for uh, caterpillars or, or moth and butterflies that feed on on this plant uh, milkweed. So that's uh, also an option that can be be interesting to you as well as the the has parasites yeah and i did not mention that one can once uh, you have the the geo position of uh, an observation or an, an occurrence you can also access uh, via um, the geo server uh, the geo image of a particular uh, geoposition, and even uh, ask for uh, what's what's like the the satellite image, a close look uh, on the on the forest that you are like uh, studying the the, uh, so the species or the occurrences of. All right, I think that's all, and and tomorrow uh, we will explore. Um, high-level machine learning functions, especially uh, yeah, classify and predict, as well as other uh, built-in functions. And on day three, uh, we're going to focus on, on text analysis. And on, on, on Thursday, as I mentioned, we will explore uh, audio processing, trying to identify some bird species by sound. And on Friday, uh, we will show I will show how to uh, create a um, a mushroom image classifier and later on deploying it uh, to your mobile phone. So, yeah, I think Sounds that's exciting, that's all for today. Jeffrey. Uh, we do have another question, la one last question for answering today. So, Norman McLeod is asking if taxonomy and phylogeny, which are not regarded by most biologists as synonymous, is mm -hmm. your taxonomy search querying a taxonomic database? or a phylogenetic database. So which is it? Is it taxonomy it's, database? It's a taxonomy. It's, it's based on taxonomy. I see. And, and it might not be the latest uh, standard taxonomy. Uh, as I mentioned, that it needs to be updated, the database on, on taxonomy. I think that doesn't matter. But but yes, uh, it, it, the taxonomy nearest uses uh, purely a um, kind of a database from I think it's uh, from Earth of I think Life or an, or, on Earth uh, dataset. Uh, I, I can share with you 
which is the, the one currently used the okay. taxonomy database but it's not uh, some in some cases they so typically in taxonomy when there there's like there's clear evidence that a taxon needs to be associated with another taxon because of genetic uh, reasons like they study the, the genetics and they realize that this species is closer to another one they update this taxonomy base so it's it's a bit related but it's not directly Thank you. And I also want to remind everyone that uh, you have a number of posts on a community, right, about biodiversity um, right. explorations. So what we are going to do is we're going to collect all the links, uh, put them together, and we'll post on the community thread. Um, I've pushed out the link to the community forum discussion again, and we really encourage uh, people to go on and post there. We know this is a limited session. So if you have further questions while you're looking at the notebooks, um, we would encourage you to go and post on the community. Geoffrey will be taking a look at that. And it, it also helps so many other people get to look at your question and the discussion. Um, and we'll also put together a list of Geoffrey's posts on further biodiversity explorations. And another fun thing that we usually do during the study groups is uh, occasionally we post like a simple challenge. So you looked at a number of different examples in today's notebook, right? Whether it's a built-in entity, um, if you're passionate about a specific endangered species, or if you're if you really like a, a, a species that you saw on the the external databases that Geoffrey uh, Geoffrey showed us. So if you want to kind of reuse the code that he has shown us and use that example for anything specific that you like, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Go and post that example on um, on the community thread as part of our challenge. So share your work with the others. Um, we'll wait just a little bit if there are any other questions. 